Good morning, America. Wild weather up and down the East Coast. Trees taking out houses. A jet crash landing in blinding rain. Entire cities blanketed by sudden squalls. And thousands of people out of power. We're tracking the latest in the storm zone. The president pushes back. Obama ridicules Mitt Romney's claim on those secret tapes that almost half of Americans believe they're victims. Plus, the surprising comments overnight from running mate Paul Ryan. Is the damage control helping or hurting? Real life Da Vinci Code is one of Christianity's biggest mysteries about to be solved. The tiny scrap of paper that could prove Jesus had a wife. Why this faded fragment may be the clue that solves an age-old question. And Jennifer Aniston's big reveal. Her top secret home security tapes revealing she's pregnant with triplets. It's all a spoof. She's in on the joke, but wait till you meet her kids. Hey, what? Mom, can I go swimming? Honey, please be a good boy. Go upstairs and take a nap. <laughs> From ABC News, live from Times Square, Wednesday, September 19, 2012. This is Good Morning America with Robin Roberts and George Stephanopoulos. Jimmy Kimmel having some fun with Jennifer Aniston there. Good morning, America. Robin on her medical leave. Josh is off. Happy to have both Elizabeth Vargas and Amy Robach here with us. And boy, we have a lot to get to this morning. I want to show you some pictures from Paris. You know, it looks pretty calm right now, but riot police are gathering right now as France announces it will close its embassies and schools in almost 20 countries. There are big fears of a hostile reaction to a magazine there that is publishing new cartoons mocking the Prophet Muhammad. After all the violence in the Middle East, there's plenty of concern about those upcoming cartoons. Also this morning, we have a stunning announcement, a major consumer alert about arsenic in your rice. As little as one bowl a day with your meals could increase the arsenic levels in your body. We'll get into the brand new reports out this morning and what they might mean for what your meals are. So many meals have that as a they table. sure do, but, but I, I, sorry, I barely heard the end there. I'm getting killed here in my ear, guys. What, what is, is going that? on up there in the control room? Hello? Hello, George! <laughs> George, can you hear me? Oh, no, Big Bird, George cannot hear me! Oh, gosh. Well, I guess we'll have to just wing it. Oh, Cookie Monster! Whoa. Ben Sherwood's on line one! Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy! <laughs> oh, uh-oh. <laughs> they, better, they better figure out a way to take that call. Ben that would Sherwood. be our boss, guys! <laughs> Pick up line one, please. <laughs> so much fun ahead. Antics, mayhem, all with Sesame Street. And line, line one, we're coming. They're yeah. going to be here all morning. It's going to be a lot of fun. But first, let's get right to those vicious weather storms ripping through the East Coast overnight. Sam has been tracking it all and is here now with the very latest on all that. Hey, Sam. Big lines of winds, rain, lightning, everything you can imagine with these storms. And they weren't your just garden variety afternoon thunderstorms. These stretched for hundreds of miles, and they really uh, lasted uh, well into the night. This is a very powerful cold front that moved through, and basically, you can see the wind reports, about 115 uh, damage reports just from the wind alone. This was all up and down the eastern seaboard. Four to eight inches of rain fell in just a few hours, and six tornado watches were issued Tuesday from the Carolinas to New York. Just look at this time-lapse video that shows the city of Philadelphia disappearing behind a wall of rain. Winds over 60 miles an hour toppled trees and snapped power lines from Washington, D.C. to Massachusetts. And eyewitnesses claim down electrical lines set this police cruiser on fire. The police car was just covered in flames. Tens of thousands spent the night without power. This tree was a wake-up call. This 110-foot red oak crashed through the roof of this New Jersey home just as a family was sleeping. No one was injured. You're panicked and you're just like screaming and I, I was crying. Traffic was stalled and flights delayed up to three hours. This Boone, North Carolina mall was underwater after a creek flowed right into the parking lot. And this corporate jet hydroplaned on the runway, crossed an embankment and crashed into a wooded area in Macon, Georgia. Only minor injuries here were reported. Amazing that there weren't more injuries in, uh, from this line of storms. Now there is fresher, cooler, drier air behind it. 63 in Pittsburgh today, 73 in Washington, D.C., 71 in New York. We'll have all of America's forecast. We come back in just a minute. George? Thank you, Sam. We're going to get the latest now on those secret tapes causing so much trouble for Mitt Romney just 48 days before the election. President Obama weighed in on Letterman last night. Mitt Romney doubled down on Fox as new polls show Obama keeping a small but clear lead in some key states. It's your voice, your vote with ABC's Jake Tapper in Washington. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, George. That's right. President Obama trying to use those remarks about 47% of Americans to paint Romney as unable to unite the country. 47% of the American people uh, voted for John McCain. What I said on election night was 
Uh, even though you didn't vote for me, I hear your voices. On Letterman, the president took a jab at Mitt Romney over this video leaked to Mother Jones magazine showing Romney saying that 47% of Americans think they're victims and won't vote for him. My job is not to worry about those people. I'll never convince them that they should take personal responsibility. My expectation is, is that if you want to be president, you got to work for everybody, mm -hmm. not just for some. And while Governor Romney defended his remarks in an appearance on Fox News. Uh, we were, of course, talking about uh, a campaign and how he's going to get close to half the vote. I'm going to get half the vote, approximately, I hope. Running mate Paul Ryan says Romney would say it differently now. He was obviously inarticulate in making this point. And the point we're trying to make here is, under the Obama economy, government dependency is up and economic stagnation is up. Late Tuesday, Mother Jones released the full secretly recorded video in which Romney suggests his campaign could capitalize on a foreign policy crisis. By the way, if something of that nature uh, presents itself, I, I will work to find a way to take advantage of the opportunity. Romney tried to pivot, reaching back 14 years to an audio tape of then-state Senator Obama speaking about how to make city governments more efficient by pooling resources. I actually believe in redistribution, at least at a certain level, to make sure that everybody's got a shot. I think a society based upon a government-centered nation, where government plays a larger and larger role, redistributes money, that's the wrong course for America. But, of course, those comments that Romney made, the 47 percent, are the news. And right now, we have news that the pro-Obama Super PAC Priorities USA Action, George, is running a new TV ad in six battleground states featuring those comments and saying that Romney does not understand real Americans. George. Well, we knew that would be coming. Okay, Jake, thanks very much. Let's get more on this now from our newest political analyst here at ABC News. Nicole Wallace served as communications chief for President George W. Bush, senior advisor to the mccain palin campaign campaign in 2008. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much. So we just saw Mitt Romney there em embracing this debate over big government and, and, a, and a senior official for the Romney campaign tells the Wall Street Journal, we think we can turn this into a debate that's good for us. You buy that? I, look, I buy that they remain steady and confident. They're heartened by the national poll numbers, which show them just a point behind President Obama. But the problem with the last two weeks is that inside the Romney campaign, they're not having meetings this morning about that tape. They're having meetings about, I think, what, what has become a structural problem for them. You win by convincing the voters that you're a stronger leader than your opponent. His gaffe last week made that a, a higher hurdle for him. And you win by, by making people feel like you understand their problems. His gaffe this week made that more difficult. And so they've first got to get to a do no harm stance where they stop making these kinds of mistakes. You mentioned the national polls. You're right, basically tied right now. But we do see Mitt Romney falling behind in those key battleground states pretty much across the board. Yeah. Look, this is the first campaign, um, I think, in, in about 20 years where they're um, paying closer attention to national polls and state polls. I think that um, has a lot more to do with the spin they're telling all of us than, than, than what they really believe is a path to victory. But I, you can't look at those state numbers and feel good about the way the message is being received, no matter what they have to say about what they feel like is an increasing uh, headwind from the media. Finally, uh, candidates have recovered from September slumps. You were for President George <laughs> W. Bush, 2000 campaign. He recovered. President Obama had a rough start in September of 2008. What's the most important thing Mitt Romney needs to do right now? They have to stop being hostage to their own mistakes. I mean, they, they really have to get back to talking about what they say they're going to talk about at 8 a.m. at 8 p.m. Okay, Nicole Wallace, <laughs> thanks very much. Now let's get to the rest of the news. Amy Robach in for Josh. Good morning, everyone. And we begin with that breaking news overseas. A French magazine has published those highly offensive cartoons mocking the Prophet Muhammad, threatening to ignite a new firestorm across the Muslim world. And we're just learning France has closed embassies and schools in at least 22 countries because of rising security concerns. The cartoons come amid already high tensions stemming from that anti-Muslim movie produced in the United States. And a scare for the U.S. ambassador to China, his Cadillac was surrounded by a mob throwing bottles outside the embassy in Beijing. They were protesting Japan's claim to a chain of disputed islands off the Chinese coast. Guards had to run to surround the ambassador's car and then escort him to safety. And schools are back open in Chicago this morning. For the first time in more than a week, union members voted to end their strike.
Even though their new contract has not yet been ratified, both sides compromise. The school day will be longer, but teachers will get a 17% raise over the next four years, and they will be evaluated based in part on their students' test scores. And a wake-up call about America's expanding waistline and rising health care costs. A new report estimates by 2030, more than a dozen states will have obesity rates over 60%. That means six in ten people will be roughly 30 or more pounds over their healthy weight, adding billions of dollars per year to the cost of treating obesity-related diseases. And an intriguing scrap of paper, smaller than a business card, is reigniting an age-old religious debate, did Jesus have a wife? Well, a Harvard scholar has just revealed that a faded piece of papyrus written in the Coptic language 400 years after Jesus died contained the phrase, Jesus said to them, my wife, whom he identified as Mary. It goes on to say she will be able to be my disciple. Karen King, the Harvard professor, is now asking other experts to weigh in on what it could all mean. Guessing a few other people might weigh in on that. The piece of paper, 1.5 by 3 inches. There has been for centuries debate about whether Mary Magdalene was mm -hmm. married to Jesus because the Gnostic Gospels, a whole other series of Gospels, claim in fact that was true. It would have been very unusual for a man in that time, a Jewish man, but not to be married. But they're almost certain that this is not a fake. At least no, they believe it's real. Yeah, right. That's right. 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 It's going to add a lot of fuel to the debate. Thank you so much, Amy. Sure. All right. Now to new warnings this morning about an American staple, rice. Consumer Reports is releasing a new report detailing what it calls worrisome levels of arsenic in many common types of rice products. The FDA is also out with a similar report today. So what does this mean for your family's health and the family dinner table? ABC's Jim Mavala is in Washington with that. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Elizabeth. It's a world staple, the starch that feeds babies to seniors, and now a troubling warning to limit how much rice we eat from a prominent source. Rice eaten just once a day can drive arsenic levels in the human body up 44%. Eaten twice a day can lead to a 70% increase in arsenic, according to a sobering report released to Good Morning America by Consumer Reports magazine this morning. Consumers ought to take steps to moderate their consumption. Consumer Reports tested for arsenic in many forms of rice, from cereal for babies and adults to brown and white whole grain, pasta and rice milk. Many contain what the magazine calls worrisome levels of arsenic. Some products had five times more than the arsenic found in oatmeal, one and a half times more than the EPA's legal standard for drinking water. Inorganic arsenic is considered a level one carcinogen linked to lung and bladder cancer. Today, the FDA will announce it is studying arsenic in rice, too, and recommends a varied diet. Consumer Reports wants more. We called for that on apple juice in January. We're calling for that again in rice products today. Surprisingly, when it comes to arsenic, the less nutritional white rice is better than brown, since the carcinogen is most prevalent in the outer layers of the grain, and white rice is polished, removing some of those layers. The USA Rice Federation does not dispute that arsenic is in rice, but says, well, that is a scary word. There is no documented evidence of actual illness linked to rice. Rice is a safe and nutritious food. These are very, very low levels. The rice contains more arsenic than other grains, experts say, because it's grown while submerged in water, soaking the poison from the ground into the rice. One suggestion from Consumer Reports, rinse it well until the water's clear and then cook the rice in fresh water, lots of it, a six to one ratio. Elizabeth? Jeez, Jim, rice is a huge component of the Latin American, the Asian diets, it's incredible. All right, thank you so much. Mm, gotta George. be careful, okay, yeah. Elizabeth. We're gonna turn now to the latest airline move that has passengers outraged. Some carriers asking parents to pay more just so they can sit with their kids. It comes as troubles mount for American Airlines, and ABC's Lisa Stark has that story from Reagan National Airport. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, George. Well, with all the packed flights and those fees for premium seats, some parents are feeling they are being forced to pay extra for those seats just so they can guarantee they will sit with their children. It's another in a long list of airline woes, woes that are especially affecting passengers who are flying American Airlines right now. The carrier is in bankruptcy, imposing new work rules and benefit cuts on pilots, and passengers are caught in the crossfire. Pilots with American Airlines seem to be so frustrated. They are calling in sick and delaying even grounding flights for minor issues. In one case, reportedly a broken coffee pot. 
kept the plane at the gate. The jet eventually took off. Pity the poor passengers. The Johnsons arrived home in Dallas 24 hours after their American flight was canceled. Yeah, so frustrating absolutely. with little kids traveling and having to miss school. The pilots union insists there's no organized slowdown, but the numbers appear to show something's going on. Tuesday, only about half of Americans' flights arrived on time, a dismal showing, much lower than the other major airlines. It's not just the slowdown that has passengers reeling. Travelers on nearly all airlines already upset over all those extra fees. Now many saying airlines are holding parents hostage, changing seat assignments that mom and dad had booked to sit with their children. That may mean families have to pay high fees to ensure they can sit together. And that does doesn't sit well with the moms we talk to. That's outrageous. As a parent, you want to make sure that you're taking care of your child. Politicians are even getting involved, with one congressman introducing the Families Flying Together Act of 2012, which would protect families in flight. You have that expectation that the airline would be such that it would kind of make an unwritten promise to you that you can sit with your children. Now, airlines insist there is no requirement that families pay those extra fees so that they can sit together, but sometimes that might mean families have to depend on the goodwill of other passengers to move seats so they can sit with their children. Elizabeth? Wow. All right, Lisa, thank you so much. Now to a surprising backlash from Korean rapper Psy's mega hit Gangnam Style. 14 California lifeguards are fighting for their jobs after they were fired for posting their own video of the dance on YouTube. They say they were just having some fun, but local officials say it was an improper use of city property. ABC's Nick Watt has the story. The beat is irresistible. Open Gangnam Style. The giddy up dance moves, infectious. Gangnam Style. Whoop, whoop, whoop. The nation is shaking its collective caboose. Gangnam Style. At the Naval Academy. Saturday Night Live. Even here on GMA. Open Gangnam Style. But when the lifeguards of Al Monte, California posted their Gangnam parody on YouTube, all 13 of them, plus the supervisor, were fired. We just wanted to do it for fun and, you know, to commemorate our summer. We never thought it would have blown up to something like this. There was a clear unauthorized use of city resources, reads a statement issued by city officials, including city-issued uniforms. There's now a Facebook page and an online petition backed by thousands pleading for reinstatement. And now Sai, the South Korean who busts those moves, he's knee-deep in the brouhaha, speaking out on MTV News. Open Gangnam Star. I'm begging you to do not fire, please. Last night, El Monte City Council listened to earnest pleas from the lifeguards. All of the employees that were fired are definitely quality employees. It's just a case of the punishment not fitting the crime. In solidarity, I've been dancing Gangnam style all morning in my office. That's company property and company time, hopefully. I won't get fired. For Good Morning America, Nick Watt, ABC News, Los Angeles. Open Gangnam Style. <laughs> oh, Nick. Nick's, Nick's pretty good at that, Sam. You will no. not get fired for a little no. Gangnam Style. You're right. Sam. You're right. I will not get <laughs> There will be no possibility of it. Let's just get for, give it a for go. that anyway. Give it a go. Um, and let's just give these kids their jobs back, by the way, yeah, because I'm sure city property's crazy. been used for worse. Okay. Um, let's show you what's happening here. We've got this cold front. This is the front that made its big move all the way across the country and dropped temperatures about about 30 degrees as it passed through with strong storms. Now it settles into Florida and it will bring some rain with it. It's not going to bring you that strong cooling. It's basically weakened now, so about five degrees cooler in the areas that get the front through. Here's where the heat stays and there's actually big fire watches and warnings out for the northern part of this map. So 80 in Salt Lake, 84 in Denver, 80 in Omaha, some gusty winds, very warm and dry air. That's the weather around the nation. Your local forecast. America. 
And now, thankfully, the big board settles down. We'll have all of America's weather again in the next half hour. Elizabeth George. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Coming Sam. up on GMA, stunning secret recordings made in one woman's home. She's suing her ex-husband for installing a secret camera while they were still married. Plus, the fake surveillance footage of Jennifer Aniston and that huge baby bump that's got everybody talking. And the gang from Sesame Street is here. But where is Bert? Uh, this is the place. Oh, I can't believe I'm late. It... Oh, no, it's locked. There must be a buzz around here someplace. Oh, no! It's the only place to be on a Thursday night. Vision gets no better than that. Serving up the superstars of the game with all the trimmings. Plus, get your finals fix with our preliminary finals preview. Let's get started. Giddy up. Come with me. No, no, thank you. The Footy Show, tonight on Win. Whether you're powering through the pool, tearing up the slopes, or going hard on the field, when you're in training, what you eat matters. So, packed with tasty ingredients, Subway low-fat subs skip the grease. And don't hold back on nutrition. Or taste. Subway club. Chicken teriyaki. Turkey for me. Choose your favourite and make it your way. With Subway Restaurants. The official training restaurant of Tora Bright, Casey Easton. James Magnuson and athletes everywhere. Train hard, eat fresh. Top range, top quality, top tools. You look so, so happy. Thanks, Dad. Well, it's all we've ever wished for. I know. Actually, there is one other wish me and your mum have. We'd like you to start your family with one less worry. Here. And this, it's all yours now, not the bank's. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? such a natural instinct to want to look after the ones you love. Which is why Brian and I are putting a few dollars a week into an Apia funeral plan. There's guaranteed acceptance for under 75s and access to as much as $30,000 when it's most needed. Sign up today and Apia will thank you with a bonus six-month magazine subscription. That's why everyone's talking about Apia. Friday, 7.30, the Melbourne Storm take on their arch rivals, the Sea Eagles. Live and exclusive on Gem. Right up there. Oh, God. Let's get... Oh, God. Oh. Oh, so much better. How are my little triplets doing? You must be so thirsty. Look at that baby bump on Jennifer Aniston. I want a, a, a corset <laughs> like that. Anything that can hold in that stomach. <laughs> I want that. Yeah. Now we know her secret. She is having so much fun in the expense of the tabloids that have given yeah. her so much trouble over the years. It's gone wildly viral. We're going to show you that 
coming up. Good morning, America. As you know, Robin's on her medical leave. Josh is off. Great to have Elizabeth Vargas, Amy Robach here. Welcome. Robin's getting a day of rest today. That's right. So yes. we're hope she's, we hope she's resting and not watching. Mm -hmm. But speaking of surveillance uh, video, we have on a very serious note a woman who says her ex-husband used hidden cameras to spy on her while they were still married. The secret recordings are now fueling a bitter legal battle. You can see some of them right there. We're going to get into that now, in just yeah. a moment. And then also everybody's talking about uh, Twilight and some big news that may be happening. Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson reportedly talking again, the biggest stars in the franchise. Well, could they be giving their failed real life romance another shot? We have new details mm. about that this morning. You're gonna wanna hear those. Also coming up, Sesame Street is taking over Times Square. Some of your favorite characters are here and they are busy getting ready for their close up. Take a look. <laughs> Hey, honey, did I look? I just had a feather cut. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the powder puff? Yeah. <laughs> this big. Great. Big, 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 but feather cut. <laughs> after Larry just got a little haircut. Yes, so. I did. I was up there you with them. Had yep. the same style. By the way, that was my nickname in high school, so I'm particularly <laughs> sensitive. Oh. <laughs> big revelation from Larry this morning. Imagine. Thank you for that. <laughs> We're going to get to that, but now we've got to turn to the serious case of home spying. A woman from Ohio is suing her ex-husband over secret recordings made while they were still married. Catherine Zhang says he wired their home tractor for months, and now she wants him to pay for it. ABC's Lindsay Davis is here with that. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, George. You likely know the song, I Always Feel Like Somebody's Watching Me. Well, that was the case for this Ohio woman, and it turns out that somebody was her husband. Catherine Zhang says her now ex-husband used surveillance technology to monitor her constantly. And while he hasn't come out to say exactly why, her lawyer says it certainly wasn't for protection. There it is. What? There it is. I found it. What? And the eye hole right here on the plug, on the outlet. Zach Holbrook was in shock when he discovered a hidden camera in an electrical outlet in his living room. Even more startling, the equipment was put in place to spy on his mother, Catherine Zhang, secretly put there by her husband, Joe. I felt very violated and, and I continue to feel violated. This equipment was hidden behind the walls in at least one room in her home. A simple home video camera, TV and a recording device tracked her family's every movement, including a vicious argument between Kathy and Joe, even capturing the moment police showed up. You grabbed me and you shook me and you pushed me. Good God, what is wrong with you? The recordings went on for months and are now at the center of a federal court battle over the right to privacy in the 21st century. What do you do when both people pay the bills? When both people share the same computer, purchased it together, it's very difficult for a prosecutor then to say, well, you have committed a crime against this other person. We're not going to uh, allow victimization like this to continue. Joe is a home builder is he's actually put small microphones and small cameras in wall outlets and disguised them as actual wall outlets. So to the average person, it just looks like an outlet on the wall. He was hacking into my personal computer account and getting into my emails. At some point, he had a GPS on my car. Catherine divorced Joe last year, but now several of her relatives and friends are battling him in court, filing lawsuits for privacy invasion after they too were caught on those secret recordings. He was pretty much videotaping 24 seven. There are some embarrassing things that, you know, I wouldn't want other people to see because I was in the privacy of my own home. We tried to reach out to Joe Zhang and his lawyers, but neither returned our phone calls. What makes this case even more complicated is that Catherine's lawyer, Don, was removed from the case two weeks ago because he might be called as a witness. He's married to Catherine's sister, and according to Joe, Don is the one who advised him to install the software to monitor his wife in the first place, though Don disputes that. George. Boy, a lot of twists there. Okay, Lindsay, thanks very much. That is a lot of twists. All right, now we're going to turn to the latest in that shocking Georgia murder trial. The defendant in this case is acting as his own attorney 17 years after the crimes he's accused of. And it was an emotional day in court on Tuesday when he cross-examined the young man whose mother he's accused of killing, the same young man he's also accused of attacking. ABC's Steve Osinsami has the story. The person in the room grabbed me and started stabbing me a bunch. 22-year-old Nicholas Smith was fighting back tears, telling his story on, of all days, 
his murdered mother's birthday. I got home from school and my mom's car was still in the driveway, so I thought that she was home and I... Um, I went downstairs and she wasn't there. He was just five years old in 1995 when prosecutors say that his mother, Carmen Smith, a Delta flight attendant, was strangled by Wasim Dacre, now 35 and sitting across the courtroom on trial for that murder and acting as his own attorney. Police say Dacre was wearing a mask, waited all day for the boy to come home, and then stabbed him 18 times. Smith showed his wounds to jurors. They covered my mouth and then um, kept stabbing me and then I just got up and fainted. Police say all of this was an act of revenge against his mother's roommate, Loretta Blatz, who helped send Dacre to jail for stalking her. I could kind of see when they ran past the window in our room, but it was still really dark and they were wearing really dark clothes. <laughs> when it was Dacre's turn to ask questions, it would be Smith's first exchange with the man he believes tore his life to pieces. Um, do you remember telling them back in 1995 that the killer's eyes were blue? No. I was in the hospital and had gotten stabbed repeatedly by you, so I don't really think that that was a very good time to be asking a five-year-old questions like that. The truth is, sometimes we just have to stand up to someone who attacked us and who changed our lives just to even say, you know, I am standing up to you. Dacre is fighting new DNA evidence that ties him to the murder and faces a life in prison. It's possible he could take the stand in his own defense this week even though he's his own lawyer. For Good Morning America, Steve Osinsami, ABC News, Atlanta. Your heart just really goes out for that young man Boy, on the stand. Boy, sure does. He oh. was strong, though. Let's get the weather now from Sam. Yeah, good morning, you guys. I can't even imagine what kind of inner strength that took to face someone like that. We're going to start with some new pictures. You know we've been talking about it all summer long. Summer is the melt season for the Arctic sea ice, but uh, there's a lot of concern from the National Snow and Ice Data Center and also these pictures from NOAA that this is the smallest amount of Arctic sea ice we've had since we've been measuring in 1979. If you look at the darker shade, that's how much sea ice we should have. Look at the white. That's how much we have. There's just a little bit more of the melt season, and then we start to build more in. But the real concern here is that really stabilizes the global patterns and that we may see some shifts in how cold air moves because of that lack of sea ice. So now we get this chilly air mass that's dipping down into the middle of the country, and that will really drop these temperatures down. If it feels cool this morning, it will feel even cooler by the time we get into Friday and Saturday. Chicago Friday and Saturday as well at 66, 61 degrees. Detroit going down into the 60s, and that's the weather around the nation. Here's what you can expect this morning. Elizabeth George. All right, take us with you, Grover. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Sam, what is this picture? We'll find out ahead. Oh, we'll no. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. No, no, no. And also coming up, babies on board for Jennifer Aniston. How the superstar is having the last laugh on all the tabloid reports right now.